Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Mercury Retrograde in Leo for 2018. I'm doing a sign-specific reading for you guys today. And while people are hopping on as I'm doing this live, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about some key things to keep in mind. Um, also, you're going to want to watch for your sun, moon, and rising if possible. Hi, Linda. Hi, Tammy. Um, so the Mercury retrograde in Leo, you, it, it's going to be a good time for you to focus on which house this is in and see where you can do some refinement, some editing, some tweaking, go back, redo, revise, rework, wherever you can. So I actually have a physical product that I'm going to be coming out with. And so that's what I'm going to take this time to um to work on so i highly recommend that you guys do the same whatever needs to be revised take some time to do that yes hello hello everybody i'm glad uh, wow there's a lot of people who are hopping on for this live reading so i'm glad you guys are here um Yes, and then this is also a really good time to manifest. So I know that if you don't know your rising, that's okay. Um, Linda, I know you don't know yours. Uh, you can look it up online just with a natal chart generator. But if you don't know it, like let's say you don't know your birth time, then you can just use this time for whatever feels right for you. So if there's something that you want to redo or manifest or rework then then just do it for whatever feels right for you okay and hello hello if you'd like you are welcome to leave your intention um for this mercury retrograde season that starts on the 26th i don't remember the end date uh, somebody can comment it if you know it off the top of your head but it starts on it starts on the uh, on the 26th, so right before we have the eclipse in Aquarius. Okay, so you're welcome to just drop a comment and say, hey, this is what I want to manifest, or this is what I'm setting my intention for. I like it when you guys do that. It's just, I like having a space where people are able to do that. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with Leo. You guys know I always like to start with whichever sign it's happening in. So this is good for sun, moon, and rising Leos. Now let's do, this can apply to anything. It might be the what's going on in your environment. It might be... Um, Whatever it is that you want to rework or manifest, all of those things can apply. So the first thing coming up for Leos is the tower. This is not a surprise because we do have, you know, all of that Aquarian and Leo energy coming to the surface. And so that is going to indicate somewhat of a breakdown in some way, shape or form. Also, the old belief systems, the old things that are not working, the way you're perceiving yourself not, you know, if there's any part of that that isn't working, it's being broken down. So remember, this is creating space for bigger and better things. This is not something to fear. It's something that's necessary. The, the tower is kind of the only way that you can really grow. This is the space maker for you. And then we also have intuitive and psychic prowess. Okay, feeling extra sensitive during this Mercury retrograde period is going to be coming up. And it, it has to do with all of the space you have, that clearing out energy of all the stuff that is either making an appearance as dysfunctional or, or chaotic or hectic or, or something that isn't working. That's really what this is cleaning up. So use this time during Mercury Retrograde to clean it up, clean up your environment, clean up your relationships, clean up the parts of your life that are draining. And you already have the information 
that you need in order to see what that is. Okay, and then we also have the Ace of Wands. So this is you getting your power back. You really making things happen and feeling more aligned with what it is that you have going on in your life. It's that breath of fresh air. So this is what you're working towards and what you're coming out of after the Mercury retrograde period. Because it might be one of those things when you have to go back and revise. It's, it's kind of boring and nobody really wants to do it, but it's necessary. So there's going to be big payoff for that. Okay. All right. And then we have Virgo. So Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising. First thing coming up is the Five of Pentacles. And so this is kind of, there's something about wanting to go unconscious or like wanting to check out might be part of the deal. It looks like this is going to be kind of a sleepy Mercury retrograde for you. And so that might be that if you've been working on 15,000 projects or doing a bunch of different things and hustling really hard, then it might be time to integrate that information rather than push it. So just keep that in mind as you go. Rest is not a waste. It's time to integrate. And then you also have third eye chakra. So this is where you see your next steps. This is what you're doing moving forward and just looking at what it is that you're trying to make happen for yourself. So great, great, great time to manifest. It's great time to ask for what you need and just starting to fine tune those manifestations. It's going to be a really great time to do that. Okay, and then we also have the Three of Swords. So you've got to let go of something. Um, whatever the case may be, I'm getting... I'm getting that it's things that you wanted for yourself in the past. You're going through cleaning that up and it might be that you have a completely different idea of what you want for the future. So be open to what you want for yourself changing. A lot of people cling to something that they wanted 10 years ago and they, they still feel like, oh, I still want that thing. But just take inventory. It might not fit. It might not make sense for your life anymore and that's okay. So just remember, be flexible with it. And so I think that there's a little bit of grief that comes up with that. Like, oh, this thing that I worked really hard for or thought that I was going to have happen and I, I changed my mind or I want something different. It can bring all of this grief up. So don't get too bogged down in I wanted it before so I should still want it or anything like that. It's just about forward movement, forward progression. Okay, so take some time to dream. That's what this guy is doing down here. I also completely forgot. So if you're a Leo, Sun, Moon, or Rising, I wanted to um, pull one of the Sovereign Oracle cards for you because they have a word and then three phrases that goes along with it. So I'm get, this is for Leo, Sun, Moon, and Rising that I'm pulling, and then I'll do another one for Virgo, and then I'll keep doing the reading. Okay, so first for Leo, the word for you is clarity. Refine your communication. Be conscious about your true desires before jumping in. Witness, reflect, then move forward with purpose. Okay, so again, about getting that, getting that energy back is a big part of what's going to help with this clarity. Letting go of what's not working. And then for Virgo, visibility. Claim your bright light. Your perfect co-creators are seeking you out. Allow yourself to be seen. It is safe to be witnessed. Okay, so that's a big thing. It might be something that you want to hide from or you don't want to jump to the forefront with, but it's, it's the right time to do it. The time is now. Okay, and then Libra, Sun, Moon, and Rising. First thing coming up, Page of Pentacles. What are you initiating? What are you starting? Okay, so this is also going to be a time when you see yourself 
um, taking bigger risks. And it might be something where you're incubating during the Mercury retrograde. It's not really a good time to take action, not because it can't be successful, but it's kind of like if you launch something in the middle of a Mercury retrograde, a lot of the time you're going to have to go back and edit later on. So it's better to go through and weigh everything out ahead of time. Just really think about it. Mercury retrograde, I love using it as an incubation period. So that that applies to everyone. But for you, it might be you looking at that new idea because you can see that there's an emphasis on the inspection aspect of this card. So for you, it's definitely going to be a time when it's like, hmm, what am I doing with this? Yes, this is for Libra. If you're just hopping on, this is I'm reading for Libra. Um, if you're watching the replay, I'll already have the um, time stamp listed out, but this is live right now. Okay, and then for Libra, we have Heart Chakra. So doing some healing around this is going to be vital for you. I think that, you know, as you're kind of inspecting your next steps, it might be something where you look inward and ask for yourself, you know, what is my heart saying? How does my heart feel? What does my heart want? What is coming from, you know, all of this work around my heart? What's really shining through? What's the most important thing for you? Okay, and then we also have strength. So it's, it's interesting. This is very Leo. This is a total Leo energy that you're running right now. So I, it's it's funny because we have Mercury retrograde in Leo, but it's like you're the heart chakra, Leo, uh, strength, Leo. And then it's it's looking at how you can run more of that in this in some way, shape, or form. So leading with your heart is going to be good, and that's what's going to help you guide your next steps is just focusing on what does your heart want. And the card or the word for you, let's see what it is for Libra. Expansion. More of your higher self is calling for expression. Your capacity is growing. The horizon beckons. Yep, yep, yep. Libra, sun, moon, rising. Yes. All, whatever the case is, this is good for your sun, moon, or rising. Um, so definitely that's why it's important for you to lead with your heart. Lead with your heart. That's big for you right now if you're a Libra, Sun, Moon, or Rising. Okay, now we're moving into Scorpio, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, or Rising. This is good for you. Okay, first thing, Three of Swords. It's funny, this is, you know, we're seeing a lot of towers and Three of Swords pop up. Because as you go through and edit, you're going to see, oh, I need to let go of that. I need to let go of that. I need to let go of that. You know, it might be um, attachment. I'm getting that for Scorpios, it's going to be more of that fixation that you have, like being fixated on the outcome, wanting to see around every corner and, you know, knowing the next step, ensuring that you're not going to fail. Um, ensuring that you're not going to get hurt. You know, that is part of the challenge with all of this, but it's one of those things where you're going to have to move forward regardless. So don't get too stuck. It's about looking at what can you let go of now to improve your quality of life. This is also going to be um, negative uh, emotions that you're holding on to, letting go of shame, guilt, fear. Um, those are really good things to review and edit during this period because it's kind of like those are weighing you down. So that's what I'm getting for this. And it's funny that anytime we're having like towers or uh, three of swords showing up in this reading, it's about the self. The Mercury retrograde period is about looking at yourself, your experience, what it is that you have going on around you. That's what this time period is so good for. And then we have sensual expression. Okay. Ooh, fear of expression. Okay. Especially if it's something romantic, intimate, 
a anything that is about that um, connection piece, there could be a lot of fear getting lit up for you. And so it's, it's just about honoring that part of yourself, honoring wherever that pain is sourced. And as you move through this and realize what it is that you need to push past, then you're going to see some breakthroughs on a really um, significant scale. Then we also have the Six of Swords. Again, moving away from this, whatever fear uh, you're having, because I know that Scorpios have this tendency to, um, like, there's like this burst of fire and expression and then retreat. And crawling back into a cave and just like burying deep, 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 deep emotion. Um, so this is where, you know, as you walk through this, as you do the work, at, you're moving out of a lot of these processes that are no longer serving you. So I think that this is going to be a great time to release a lot of that emotional baggage or at least witness it, right? Because you don't have to like do anything with it necessarily. It's about acknowledging and witnessing it. And then... The word for Scorpio, experience. Acknowledge what it took. Be patient with new endeavors. Some paths need time to unfold. It doesn't matter what time you arrive to the party. The future is waiting and you're ready now. I, I love this card so, so, so much. Okay, so that, the be patient with new endeavors, some paths need time to unfold. Like, I want to plaster that all over the place. <laughs> okay. So, now we have Sagittarius. Hello, Sagittarius. Sun, moon, rising. Okay, first thing coming up for you. Ten of Wands carrying a heavy load are we it's kind of like when you're weighed down if you have too much going on that's what you're editing that's what you're going through and revising do you want to be stuffed to the gills with plans do you want your plate to be full all the time these are things that you want to make sure you're paying attention to because it's if it's not working and it doesn't feel good or if your identity is wrapped up in how busy you are or how full your uh, how full your schedule is or how little sleep you're getting those are things where it's like what is it really doing to your quality of life and is it really filling your cup or is it just you trying to mask another need that isn't being filled so pay attention to what's really going on underneath that I'm busy or my schedule's full or um, wanting to burn the candle at both ends. That's usually a symptom of something else. And then we have expectation. So this could also be pointing to those of you who have really codependent patterns. I'm going to take on responsibility for everyone else's work, emotions, baggage, responsibilities. And then I want it to be... Um, uh, reciprocated in the same way and that's what can lead to resentments so just remember that if you find yourself in that push-pull of I give too much and then it doesn't work out and nobody is giving as much to me that actually stems from a lack of communication too many expectations and not enough boundaries so it's something that you can absolutely tweak and then we have the Four of Pentacles. This is showing you that you need to withhold. You need to pull your energy back. Keep your energy for yourself. You don't need to give it to people every day all the time. You don't need to overgive. You don't need to have to take on responsibilities for other people. So just remember that it could easily be something that's contributing to this overwhelm, this Ten of Wands energy that you're running. So it's it's okay to say no. And then the word for you. Expression. 
Your creative soul beckons you to create something tangible. Wait no longer. What you wish to make wishes you to make it. Tell us the truth with beauty. I would also say set boundaries with grace. You know, boundaries doesn't mean you have to be mean. Boundaries means that you honor yourself and you honor your needs and you communicate that to other people in a way that is aligned with you. That is all it means. It do, it's not this thing where you're, you're evil. You know, there's that perception about boundaries. So just, it's time to kick that to the curb. All right, Capricorn, sun, moon, rising. How are you doing? Let's see what's coming through for you. Two of Pentacles. So there's a decision that you need to think about. There's there's something going on that you're probably contemplating and that you want to take some time and just feel into, is this right for me? Is this really what I want to do? Is there something else going on? Are there factors that I haven't considered? It's okay to not have the answer yet. You're getting there and you're going to get to a point where you feel really grounded in the answer. Um, but let yourself kind of sit in the uncertainty and, and see what else comes up because you don't have to be completely decided about this. All right, and then we also have standstill, contemplation. All right, so that is what's coming up for standstill is just looking at, you know, all the different avenues, all the different possibilities. Okay, and I think that, that taking some time to not act is good for you. It might be something where it's like it, it gives you more space to feel into the right decision before you plunge into the unknown or into the next step. And then we also have the Mother of Swords. So it's okay if your thinking or your thought process is unconventional. This may be a situation that there's not many people who understand or get you. And that's okay too. It's just about remembering what it is that you want, what it is that you need, and reclaiming that for yourself, taking some, some time for quiet and stillness is going to do you a lot of good. And then for the for the word for Capricorn, we have ritual. Seek joy and repetition, explore the sacredness of the task at hand, be intentional with your time. Okay, I like that one. I I think that that's actually a little bit uh disconnected in some way. I think that that's just pointing to, hey, focus on what, how you're starting and ending your day. That's one of the best places to start with it. And um, using that as a, as a way to guide your next steps or help you make decisions around it. Aquarius, sun, moon, rising. Hello, hello. What's coming through for you today? We have the Eight of Pentacles getting to work on something, but it's, there's, there's something that is like needing adjustment too. So it's about nourishing something. So what, what comes up? Because you can see this card, you know, it's not, it's not hard work. It's not laborious. It's pleasure-based. It's I'm going to feed the things that need to be fed. And that is really coming through, especially because we have the reference to plants, healing, nourishing, and having plenty. Okay, so just remember this is something that you can use to your advantage and, and start giving back to yourself as well. And then we have pleasure and pain. Okay, so it's it, it might feel like a mixed bag. This might be scary or painful or hard or challenging or, I mean, it, it's it's something that if it's new or if it's something that you've been kind of shoving in the closet and not wanting to deal with, it can be hard in the beginning and that's okay. Again, there is no right or wrong way to do this or to, to be a human being or to learn or to grow. This is just about doing the work. 
And then we have five of uh, wands. It's not gonna feel like it's coming together. So like, let's, let's set aside the expectation that this is going to get immediate results. I forget where I heard this, but it has been coming up for so many people lately. If you plant a seed, you cannot expect to eat fruit that day. I wish I knew who who I'm quoting right now because it's so, so good. Um, but, but that is the thing that you want to keep in mind um, is that the, the work takes time. It's progressive. It's something that happens over time. So just remember that. It, as you walk through this period and as you go through, review, edit, revise, see what needs to be adjusted for yourself, and that is going to be the best gift you can give yourself during Mercury retrograde. And then, let me see the word that's coming up for you. Foundation, lay the concrete first. Establish patterns, create coherency and stability. Know that you deserve sustainability, allow it in. So consistency is a big part of this as well. It's not something that just, again, it doesn't come overnight. It takes time, you, ha you have to build, you have to get your toolkit, you have to you know, reach out to your support system, you have to do all of these things so that you're able to build off of that and you have a platform to do that. Okay, and then Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising. Ah, oop, sorry, I, I knocked the tripod a little bit. Okay, first thing coming up for Pisces is the Six of Chalices. Ooh, I love this card. It totally makes me think of like a, a luxurious spa. You know, just like hanging out. This is a very Pisces card. You have soulmate connections coming through. You might you might find that connections are starting to sprout back up um, more and more with this. It is about that soulmate divine connection that you have with other people and with yourself. Please do not forget this. Your relationship with yourself is the most important thing. And Pisces being so giving and, and loving and caring and, you know, a lot of Pisces can just be bleeding hearts in a lot of ways. And so what you want to do is make sure you're filling your own cup as well. And that is going to be the biggest thing that you can do to really set the tone for the quality of people that you have come into your space. All right, and then we also have healing. Ooh, what is this? You guys have, uh, well, we'll see. But this, this right here, you're doing something big during this Mercury retrograde. I can tell you that right now because this is part of what is healing you moving forward. Giving to yourself, honoring yourself, um, experiencing those healthy connections claiming what it is that you want, what it is that you need. That is going to be the secret sauce for you. Okay, and then we have the six of wands. Victory, okay, getting what you want. This is like you're emerging from a very dark either thought process, experience, time period. There's like you're I am in love with this reading because it's just showing you emerging from this thing that you were experiencing or this time that you were in and you're getting the healing that you need, you're getting the nourishment that you need and in turn you are getting the connections that you need as well. So this is an exciting read to have show up. And then the word for you For Pisces, Sun, Moon, Rising, we have openness. Relax your striving and invite gentle curiosity. Be willing to see a new perspective. That's this right here. Don't over plan. Leave room for magic to breathe. All right. Ain't that the truth? 
Okay, so it's definitely about leaving that space there. It's working for you. Remember, space, patience, it's, it's not like a, a punishment or something that is, um, that you're doing to cause this. It's something that's working for you. So the more that you can adopt that, um, that mindset and perspective, it's going to, it's going to loosen your grip on anything that you feel really stuck on. Okay. Aries, sun, moon, and rising. Hello, hello strength. All right. Isn't that a ferocious lion? Like that is such Aries energy. Like, yes, I'm getting what I want. I'm getting what I need. But I feel like there's a catch here because it's not going to like, you're not going to blow the doors off of everything that you walk into during Mercury retrograde. There's something else going on here. So let me pull the other cards. Soul knowing. Okay, so this is going to be a really interesting time. Let me pull the third one. Two of Pentacles. Watch reactivity. That's what I was picking up here. This is not a time to rush into decision making. This is not a time to really push things and, and like just pop off. You want to make sure that you are being balanced with this. Stay around some friends that make you feel grounded or um, remind yourself that, you know, you might not have all the information yet and you won't be able to tap into the soul knowing if you're not experiencing quiet, if you're not experiencing stillness and silence. And if you don't leave any room for this, you're not going to have all the information. So just watch yourself if you are feeling really, really aggressive or like you just want to dive headfirst into everything. I would say, you know, take your foot off the gas pedal and, you know, r relax into it. And it's so funny. I, th I think if I remember correctly, the Aries August reading was cool your jets. <laughs> and so I think in large part, it's because of this. It's like you're going to figure out whatever decision you have running, whatever it is that you need to do moving forward, you're figuring it out. But, you know, blowing through it isn't going to help you. So take your time. Let's see what card is coming up for you. What word? Experiment. Give it a chance to evolve. Be patient. Be patient with your effort. Have fun on the journey. Leave room in the plan for creative detours and in the moment modifications. So remember that it's, it, you know, it, you can give it some time to see what else is coming up. And that might serve you better than diving into a decision right away. So just, just something to keep in mind. All right, Taurus, sun, moon, and rising. Hello, hello to all my Taurus friends. First thing coming up, we have queen of swords. This is such, this is so interesting because the first thing that came up was the fact that she is closing the beak. Like, what are you... It, this is showing up as one of two things. Either this is something that you might need to practice is like listening more. What is it that you are, you know, hearing from other people? Are you hearing people correctly? We know that's a, like a keystone element of Mercury retrograde is when somebody talks, it sounds to you like gobbledygook. And when you say something, it sounds like gobbledygook to the other person. So double check with yourself what it is that you are hearing and don't react immediately if you hear something. It really, really check with how the other person means it, with how you feel about it, with what they're really trying to communicate. Just, you know, listen first. Take your time with that. The other piece of this is, is there something that you've been meaning to express? Is there something you want to speak up about? Is there something that you want to communicate that you're not? Is there something you're holding back? So those are the, the two ways that it's going to be showing up for Taurus. And then we have solar plexus chakra. 
watch yourself with feeling really controlling. Okay, so it, it might be something where if something's out of your control, it can create gridlock in the diaphragm, in the solar plexus. And so if you can just kind of loosen up and see what it is, I think you're in kind of an observation period. That's what this looks like to me. That's what it's reading as. And then we also have two of cups. It's all about connection. Whatever this is, it's your connections to other people that you might be finding you want to be overly controlling with. You want it to go exactly your way. Remember, you're a fixed sign. So Scorpio is is in the same boat as you as far as like really wanting to tighten your grip around something. If you just loosen up on that a little bit, listen a little bit more, think about what it is that you're looking to communicate, leading with the connections that matter. That is going to help a great deal. And then the word for you during Mercury retrograde. Compost. Break it down into its elements. Let whatever isn't working become the soil for your next endeavor. Send it to the earth. Let it return to you with new vitality. All right. So it's definitely time just to audit yourself. And, you know, anything that is kind of, um, you know, I, I hesitate to say falling apart. That sounds a little bit harsh. That's not exactly communicating what I want to. But anything that's falling apart, remember that it's it's going somewhere else that it's needed. And so that's what is going to help you at this time. Oh, and I just want to give a quick thank you to everybody who's commenting. You guys are so sweet. Thank you so, so, so much. I appreciate each and every one of you. I'm glad you're enjoying these readings. It's always a blast, you know, coming on live and hanging out with you guys. Okay. Gemini, sun, moon, and rising. <sighs> What's coming through first? We have page of chalices. This is the page of cups. Being honest with your emotions. This is something where you're coming down from being so cerebral and airy and up in, in the head. You know, Mercury retrograde is kind of when that... Um, I, I find that for a lot of people, that when Mercury kind of goes offline, it's easier to come into your body. Some people feel the opposite, but for you, it looks like you're having that experience where instead of being up top, when Mercury is in retrograde or retrograding, then it, you're able to come down into your heart, if that makes sense. So that is what it looks like is happening for you. And then we have loudspeaker. Okay, so it's less about thinking about it and more about communicating about it. Uh, you know, Geminis are talkers, so it's really about making sure that it's heart-centered. Uh, this isn't going to be a good time to over-intellectualize. You know, that's not, that's not going to um, make this as easy. It's actually going to make it muddier. So just let yourself kind of feel into communicating things as they come up, but not not um, putting too much weight into them, just being, letting it flow a little bit is going to be easier for you. And then we also have Daughter of Wands. You have the energy to do it, okay? So it's just going to be the right time for you to focus on that and then leading with the energy that you bring into the world. It's, it, it really, I think that this is going to be a very mild Mercury retrograde for you. I don't think that this is going to be some crazy profound experience. I think it's just going to be easier for you to come into the body and, um, Good time to exercise, good time to get movement in. It's good, a good time to just focus on staying grounded, okay? And then I'll pick a word for you for this time period. Let's see what's coming up for Gemini. 
surrender. Let go of changing things outside of your control. Don't let the drive of your ego get in the way of your true peace. Release the need to win. Again, don't put too much stock in what it is that you are feeling. It's just about staying embodied, staying grounded. You can, you know, figure it out as you go, but you don't need to understand it right away. All right, last but not least, we have Cancer. Hello, hello, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. Let's see what's going on with you. Six of Swords, forward movement. I think that the incubation period that kind of comes along with Mercury retrograde is giving you a lot of support and insight as to how you want to move forward. I said it once, I'll say it again. Stillness is not a bad thing. It's contributing to something greater. And so by stillness, stillness, I don't mean stagnation. That's different. Remember, feeling like you haven't had movement in forever isn't what I'm talking about. I'm saying taking some time to integrate information, be in an incubator, not focus so much on whatever it is that's going on out there, but looking inside first. It's giving you the insight that you need to really move away from things that aren't working. And then we also have base chakra. So this is the root, your relationship with money, your resources, your personal, um, you know, and, and this makes a lot of sense for those of you who are cancer rising because this is hitting the money area for you. Um, the Mercury retrograde. So this is going to be any limiting beliefs around resources. Uh, some ones that are coming to mind in order to make money, I have to work really hard. That's a common one. Also, money is hard to find. Money is hard to come across. Um, only lucky people make a lot of money. Or it's just not something that's working for me. Or I'm not destined to make a lot of money. I'm not good at making money. That stuff isn't helping. So it's time to put those limiting beliefs to bed and rebuilding new ones that work for you and feel good for you. And in the beginning, if you're moving away from financial belief systems, because this definitely is resources, support, family, money, time, energy, all of those are resources. So it's, it's not always comfortable rebuilding them, but it's something you're gonna get a huge glimpse in. And then we have Eight of Pentacles. Remember that this takes work. It's not something that I'm just going to sit here and say, oh, just let it go. That's garbage advice. I'm never going to tell you to do that. So just, it's a process. It's not easy. It's about just witnessing the belief system in the beginning and then slowly fine tuning it as you go is the biggest thing that is going to help you throughout this process, throughout this time. And then the card or the word for you. Vitality, protect your energy, invite life affirming relationships, release energy vampires, honor your body's requests. This is also pointing to a very important point about resources is that if you're spending a lot of time with a lot of negative Nancys or people who have who are constantly saying, I'm broke, that's too expensive, watch yourself with that, that's not going to help you. Or uh, people who are constantly coming from a lack state, audit your friendships, audit the people that you spend the most time with. I cannot emphasize that enough because it is going to drain you. The vitality card is reminding you, invite life-affirming relationships, release energy vampires. And if you're hanging out with somebody who's trying to plant seeds on how expensive everything is, it's not gonna help you feel like you have abundant resources. So the, these are all things that you can do over Mercury retrograde and just take inventory of what belief systems you're running around resources. Okay, so that is all that I have for you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you so, so, so much. 
Don't forget, you are welcome to go to my website if you're interested in working with me. The links are in the description box if you are watching this on YouTube. And thank you so much for everybody on Facebook who's joining me for this live broadcast. I appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I will talk to you all later. Have a beautiful week and good luck with everything. Bye-bye.